We'll move the scaffolding, then I'll just back up close to it and we'll just spling stuff. Okay. So today, the most beautiful woman on earth and myself are going to be getting rid of all of the metal. We're taking it all to the recycle place. Not only can we make a couple of dollars, but uh, it gets recycled, which is a good thing. you think we got for scrap metal that was about a thousand pounds I hate to say it but we're gonna have to take up this stone right in front of the front door I was hoping we could keep it when I first saw it but no it's just breaking up I don't think it's solid enough underneath for this type of stone this whole thing is gonna end up being one type of flooring anyway so this has got to go Molly's currently working on getting all of the paper off the walls in the master bath. Hello, lady. I was just thinking about what I'm grateful for. What's that? Every wall that doesn't have wallpaper on it. And in the other bathroom, I've taken down the old light fixture. I've taken out the fire hazard heater. Don't ever have a heater right there. It's a bad idea. And then this wall, really goofy how low it is. I guess it was a 1970s thing, I don't know. I, I don't really understand this, but I guess it was so that you could have a steam shower, maybe? Anybody in a 1970s house still have a really low pocket area in their shower like this? I don't know, so we gotta take all this out, reframe it so that on the outside, we've only got a little bit of wall that comes down that way you don't die while you're in the shower because you don't get any air. Fixing up some fabric softener to loosen up the wallpaper. I'm using the scent free kind because I love Barry and he doesn't love lavender fields or any of those smells. Look at those muscles. Oh, stop! <laughs> A little bit of fabric softener and some water and I, um, after I take off the decorative layer on the wallpaper then um, the adhesive layer I, I re-wet and, um, and then scrape that off after it's softened with, fabric softener. with a little bit of fabric softener but mostly water nice. I think I have an idea for those people who are all into this AMS ASMR 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 thing, um, slow-mo wallpaper peeling. It's it's almost as good as like picking off dead burnt skin or something, but <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> if, you, if you like peel it really slow, it's, oh. Oh well. <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> so on the floor here in the main bathroom, the top layer was the most recent. That's just the lick and stick, easy, cheapy stuff. And then under it, probably, I don't know, 80s, 90s, there's this weird triangular pattern but check out the first layer probably original back in the 70s that is some groovy stuff man and it's actually still really valuable really cool 
front, it went with the green and yellow striped wallpaper that was the bottom layer. Oh yeah. They were coordinating. At the moment I'm working on the electrical in the kitchen. Tearing out all the old stuff, all the mismatched wires, uh, the hodgepodge of stuff that they put together to make it work. And I'm replacing absolutely everything. I was working on this last night until about 10, way too late to film because I was doing everything with a little headlamp. It wouldn't have made good video. So far I've gotten one of the two outlet circuits in place, the fridge circuit in place, and some of the lighting just above the island that's going to be in the center of the room. I'm going to put a little drop down section of ceiling with a couple of lights in it. That's the next thing to get installed so I can put the lights in it so I can get them hooked up so we can have light in here again. Oops. I made it too small. I made it 24 inches instead of 32 inches. I'm allowed one mistake per house, right? Shh, don't tell anybody. Well, here's an interesting twist. I had to grab a chair and sit down for this one to explain it to you. I went to cap these two pipes that used to come up to feed the old sink because I'm working on this wall. And I was planning on just tying into the CPVC underneath to feed the new uh, sink location across the room. So I started really looking at where the pipes go and I, now that the basement is clear, now that all of the old insulation is out, I can actually see where they ran the pipes. I, I could not believe how they ran the pipes in this house. They go from the road, under the house, up through the floor into the laundry room with a cutoff, back down through the floor, all the way across the entire house, and then under the slabs of the garage. All the way across that, they pop out on the other side down in the little workshop underneath. That's where another cutoff and the pressure reducer valve are located. Then it goes to CPVC to a T. One side of the T does this really fancy little loop-de-loop -loop and across to a spigot down in this little room. The other side of the T goes back under the slab all the way across both garages again and feeds the house. So literally the water comes from the road and goes about 300 extra feet of, of potential leaks and all kinds of stupidity. There, I, there had to have been an actual reason for that. I don't know. But I'm not really even going to fool with it. I'm just going to rip it all out. I'm going to completely get rid of the CPVC, which is brittle anyway, and I'm going to upgrade it to a PEX manifold system. PEX, which is polyethylene cross grain, can freeze solid without breaking, and the manifold system omits all connections under the house. I had really been debating on whether or not I wanted to replace all the supply line. I usually do in houses, but I was like, no, you know, this works. Eh, no, 